this is Chuck from Monococ Metalworks. Today we are putting together some floor and inner sill assemblies. We're going to be doing that in the jig, but first we need to kind of prepare the parts before they go together in the jig. So we've got floors here. These are not of our manufacturer, but they work out pretty well and they've already been stripped of their shipping primer. You don't want to trust any of the primer that comes on these parts. Um, I like to get a good adhesion. All of our stuff gets scuffed down before we prime. So for now, it's just been stripped off. And then here are the inner sills that we are using. And if you come on over, take a look here. This is the engine frame bracket that goes down low on the outer edges. And that goes right on the front of the inner sill. Now, if you look, these are designed, these are our engine frame brackets. You definitely want to get those here because, and I, I guess we should go back to this, it is imperative that these distances are correct. And these were all checked with our jig bracket that's going to go on here, but they've got to be right with a piece of 18 gauge sandwiched in the middle. All right, and then when you put them on there, you, we're gonna put the floors on top here. Some people put them on bottom, that is incorrect. I'll tell you about that later, but um, you wanna put the sill underneath the floor, so you've got an 18 gauge floor that's gonna be coming in here. Now, these inner sills already have two holes in them, and the engine frame brackets will also have holes. It wasn't that way originally from the factory, but it comes that way now and we make our engine frame brackets that way. We are now going to take the big spot welder and spot weld this. Now, on the original cars, they spot welded the hell out of this. And so it's very difficult for you to reuse this because you're never gonna be, by the time you drill out the spot welds, there'll be nothing left. So we will spot weld all around these bolts. Then we will take these bolts out and we will weld them up with a MIG welder, kind of like a plug weld that goes all the way through. Now, if you don't have a big spot welder at home, you don't want to use a little one because you got two layers of 16 gauge with a layer of 18 gauge in the middle. You need serious power and pressure to spot weld that. So at home, put it together just like this with the bolts, get everything lined up the way you want it, and then just go ahead and MIG around the edges. You could drill a couple plug weld holes here if you want and MIG it in there. Then pull these out and you're going to get that plug weld in there. And with the MIG on the edges and this hole in here, it's going to be fine. Here's what the outer side looks like. All right. And you'll be seeing a lot more of that as this project goes. So we're going to spot weld that and then weld that up with the MIG. We are also going to attach our radius arm cups to the floor. You can see while we're still here, here's our cross members and this is our hidden subframe tubing. We're going to weld these. See, we're doing two, we're doing two assemblies. So there's two of everything here. Um, these will get welded into the inner sill. I guess I'll just show you that. These are going to go right in here like that. Okay. And then these are for the under the cross members. Here's the cross member. You've seen this in our other videos. It's 18 gauge instead of 20. There's our centerpiece. We've already painted the inside and put our weld through primer on those flanges. So that's all ready to go. Now here's our new radius cup. When you buy these new, I have a special source that I used to get them from and I still have some left over. Um, you've got to be careful. See this weld here? This is where they weld the bung inside the radius cup. And you can see down in there, it's been done with a TIG welder. So it's in there, it's not going anywhere, and it hasn't distorted this cup. Another manufacturer does this with a MIG. And to MIG this eighth inch thick plate to this super heavy half inch thick bung, they have got to really crank that thing up. And when they do, they don't have a little blue mark here. They have a blue lump of distortion and you can't get the radius cup on. So if you end up with a pair like that, you need to check that out while you still got it on the bench grind it down some with a sanding disc and make sure your radius cup is gonna fit. 
Now we're gonna prime the inside of this. We're gonna put some primer on here. And then originally these had kind of like a heavy duty pop rivet, but we use a solid steel rivet with a head that represents the original head. And we are gonna put that in from this side. Got my gloves on here. We're gonna put that in from there. And then we are gonna just, there's a little bit sticking out. I don't know, you wanna go under there and see if you can get that? Can you see it? See, there's a little bit sticking out. And when this is flipped over, we will take a TIG welder and basically melt that little bit sticking out and almost use its own self as a filler rod and fill that in. What I typically will do is put a bunch of machine screws in all of these, pull it down tight, then pull them out one at a time and replace those machine screws with my solid rivet. Now, sometimes the rivet doesn't want to go down through there. It's not lined up quite right. So you put a couple machine screws in and then just gently run a 3 16 drill bit down through to give you that, um, that clearance. I'll tell you another little tip while I'm here. These little rivets have a little bit of a chamfer in the head. I don't know if you can see that, just right under the head. And so it helps to just take a bigger drill bit and just kind of relieve these holes a little bit, almost like you would with a countersunk screw, just a touch so that this gets down in there real tight. So for now, we're gonna go over to the big spot welder and spot weld on these, um, these engine frame brackets here. Probably won't show you that because it's gonna take both of us to manipulate things. But then after that, we'll pull these bolts out, weld this up and move to the next step when we weld in the tubing. All right, we've spot welded these on there. I've pulled those little bolts out, and now I'm going to weld up these holes. Um, we're just going to—it's a thick—it's a thick sandwich, two 16 and an 18 gauge piece. So we're going to weld up this side, then flip it over and weld up the other side. All right, let's get this side first. There's this side, and you're seeing a lot of contamination come out because it's got that weld through primer in there. You know, you can weld through it, but it does spit a lot of junk out sometimes. All right, so then here's the other side. If you look in there, you can see it's not quite down through there, but it's going to be now. Gotta keep that nice and hot. There you go. That's it. So now we've got two plug welds that go all the way through and they've even grabbed that middle layer and then we've got all these nice heavy duty spot welds. That ought to hold it. But we're also gonna be welding a tube in here. So this isn't going anywhere. All right, our welding is done. And as you can see, I've ground down this one knob of weld. This one can stay there, so you can still got, that'll all get wiped off. Um, but this one's been ground down. We are gonna put our, our hidden subframe tube right in here. It's gonna run all the way down to here. And down here, you need to flatten out this little feature. I believe this is a fill hole for the factory dipping in the primer process to get it down into this area. But anyway, it doesn't do anything now. There's no wires going through it or anything. And this is gonna get partially covered up with that piece of tubing. So you need to flatten that out like that. You don't need to do the whole thing just up to the bottom of this stiffening rib, which actually also acts as a place where the wiring harness runs. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and attach the radius cups to the floor. So you can see where I've put some primer on the floor. I've also primed the inside of the radius cup. This one's still a little wet. I've really put a lot of red oxide in this one. And then as I was discussing earlier, you can see where I've just taken a 5 16 drill and just chamfered the edge of the holes so that when you put the 
rivet in, it really sits down flush on there. Now I found that putting these three in as machine screws with a nut on the bottom will really pull it down tight. It would be nice if there were some in the corner, but there aren't. And now originally the cars would have not had all eight rivets in. One side would have had this one and this one, and then the other side would have had this one and this one up front because the seat dish comes in at an angle. But you really don't have an interference problem, and so I do always put all eight in. So what we're gonna do now, and these rivets are just set in here for me to show you. I'll pull these out, I'm gonna flip this over, and then one at a time, I'm going to use the TIG welder to melt the top down and just weld that right in. You don't want to weld the radius cup to the floor because it'll put heat in here and you can get cracking around that weld. I've seen that a lot. Really, you just want some good strong rivets to hold this in place. It just needs that slightest little you know, ten thousandths of an inch wiggle room so it doesn't crack out of there. Okay, I just welded in the first of the rivets. I didn't want the first one to be the one that's on film. So what I do is I use, you know, whatever you can to hold these things in place. So you were gonna shove them up under here. Where are we here? Hello. All right, there we go. Now, this is a pair of plug welding pliers. And I've already adjusted them, but see, they've got this nice little horseshoe shape so that when they're clamped on there, it holds it up in there nice and tight. All right, now, that what I've done with that other one is simply melt the part that's sticking out down into this plate. All right? So here's, we're gonna give that another shot. You ready? Here we go. All right, we're letting a little post flow go on there so it doesn't get contaminated while it's cooling off. And there you go. That is one rivet melted into a plate. So it's all one piece on the top, but down bottom, it's still just a plate riveted on. You can do this at home with a MIG welder. You just got to crank it up real high and then you're just gonna put a big MIG thing around there. I like this way because you do get a little better penetration and then you don't have as much sticking out on top. But a MIG welder will work fine if you crank it up and get the penetration you need. Okay, we finished up here and all of our rivets are welded in and we've used a TIG welder to weld them in on the top. And you can see where the heat has come through the rivet. One thing I forgot to mention before is when you do it this way and weld them on the top, putting that heat in the rivet shrinks it and it really pulls things tight. There's your um, welds on the top. Again, with a MIG, they would be a little bigger. You'd have a little more material because you're feeding that wire in. And then we are actually doing two projects at one time here in this step. And the one on the left is the common style the one on the right is a flat floor. So you can see where they just had a very basic little piece to hold in the radius arm cup. And then they had a separate piece for the safety strap. And then in the later cars, they used all one piece, probably to give it a little extra strength because the radius cup really loves to wiggle around in there and rip the floor out. That's why we put that piece of hidden subframe tubing in on top of it. And you can see that in one of our recent videos with the 67 coupe we were restoring. Okay, next we're gonna prepare to put the tubing into the inner sills. And I like to do this with the inner sills on a bench before anything else is together because you can and it's a lot easier to work with. Now here's a little sample piece of the tubing that we're gonna use. It's one inch by two inch by eighth inch wall. And you can see, I've just put this little sample piece in there to see how it's gonna fit. 
okay, and get a mark. So now you can see I have scored along here with a pair of calipers a mark so that I can tape this off and just put some primer on this section here like I've done over here. See, there's where I've put the tape on. And you can see that I've also put the primer on the underside of the tubing as well. And I've stayed away from the edges so I don't contaminate my well. Now you can see the tubing has a seam in it. It's a really nice seam, but I always do just put the seam down. Now I used to put this down here and you have to stay at least three eighths of an inch up for the curvature of the sill. You probably don't need quite that much, but you need to be up. You can't just put this thing flat down bottom or the outer sill won't come in. But then it's hard to get up in this top with your MIG welder and weld. It really doesn't matter. So I have started putting them up here. And then I just get a nice little touch in here and I'm gonna run my beads of weld right in here. See, there's my mark, so I've just painted to there. All right, now down here on this end, you'll see it hits this. Now, I did notch one of these once, so it fit perfectly, but that is irrelevant with this tubing, and it's just easier to just pop it right over. You're gonna have a little gap, uh, but that's okay. It, it just doesn't matter. It comes back a couple inches and pulls in tight, and it's all fine. And you're gonna put beads of weld around there. And then in the back, I'm sliding down. See where I've mashed this flat so my tubing rides over it just nice? And then we're gonna go right up to this, but not weld on it. This is just completely arbitrary here. Our tube is a stiffener. We're not building a NASCAR roll cage. So um, it's just gonna come to the end a little bit, all right? So let's see what it looks like with the tube. All right, there's our full tube there over kind of tough with one hand all right now I've got my tube in there I've got it all the way shoved up against here and I'm just gonna run a little bead in there as well all right I'm gonna put beads all on here and I'm gonna map them out ahead of time and then down here you can see I've just come to the edge I'm a little shy of the edge but that's okay that's on purpose I don't feel like grinding this down so 52 and a half inches seems to be about perfect. All right, let's go ahead and clamp that down now. Okay, our tube is all clamped into place now and ready to go. You can see I've used a lot of clamps. I want to keep things nice and straight and tight. These inner sills will bow a little in this area, and so you want to make sure that's tight up against there before you start to weld. You can see that I've marked where I'm going to put my weld beads. I've got those little squiggles, which means that's where the weld goes. You'd be surprised that it always gets a little hectic when you're welding. And so anything you can do to make things simpler as you're going along always seems to help. So let's go ahead and weld her up. Okay, we're all welded in and that turned out pretty well. You can see here we've welded this right to the lower engine frame bracket there. And then we see how we have our beads right inside of our little marks that we made and they, they are helpful. You wanna make sure you know, you're not outside of the mark. That's why I put the little squiggly there. But you can see that you, know, you just take your time, get the welder set just right Make yourself a nice little bead. Now, I will admit that, you know, I took these blocks of wood here and tilted this up. So I had a nice uh, workspace. And then over here, I, you know, I tilted it up like this. So it was right in there. Um, the other thing is when you're making these beads to a real thick piece to a thinner piece, you want to just favor the thick metal almost like you are putting a bead on the thick piece and then just bleeding over onto the thin piece. I know here it's kind of like I just welded between the two and that's kind of what happens, but you just want to always have in mind that you are favoring that big piece. So that's what that looks like. See, I left all the clamps on during the entire process. And now I am going to do the other three because remember we're doing two cars.